You are listening to the podcast of Calvary Church in Irwin, Pennsylvania. For more information, you can visit us online at calvaryirwin.com. Today, we got some fun stuff planned. If you're like, man, I wasn't sure I was going to come to church on New Year's Day, you picked a good day to come. It's going to be fun. So this morning, we're kicking off a new series uh, here, and uh, really this, the idea of this series, this is at the core of who we are as a church, like our passion. And if you're not familiar, if you're new, uh, our, our mission as a church is to lead people into an overflowing life with Jesus. We aren't just here to have church. We aren't just here to go through the motions. We're not just a religious organization. We don't just gather so we can do this and check a box in our lives and go home and, and live way we, whatever we wanna do and do whatever we wanna do. We wanna equip you and we wanna equip everyone to live an overflowing life with Jesus, meaning that what God does in you, he does through you, that, that it, it flows over into someone else's life. And, and here's kind of the best analogy I could think of it, uh, is we don't just have a mission, but we have a goal. So if, if our mission was a soccer ball, our community would be the goal. I don't know if any of you like soccer. Does anyone like soccer? No one likes soccer. This is a perfect illustration. <laughs> I nailed it. I, I played soccer uh, in high school and in college, so I enjoy soccer. I'm not as good as Pastor Ron. Pastor Ron is up here. I'm like down here, but I can kick a ball. Um, and so if this, if this were our mission as a church, okay, if a soccer ball were our mission, this is, the goal is our community. We don't just exist as a church to fulfill our mission. No, we want to direct, aim our goal. Look at that. That was the most pathetic kick ever. But... The big important thing is I didn't break anything. That was, that was our goal. Uh, but, but here's the deal. If, if God blessed us as a church and we gathered thousands instead of hundreds in this place and yet didn't transform our community, I would say we've fallen short. And I don't know uh, how the last few years of pandemic and all that we've walked through has affected you, but I can tell for me, and I think for a lot of people, it's caused us to ask this question. Uh, maybe you've asked this question. Why? Why am I doing what I'm doing? Some of you maybe have changed careers or jobs. Maybe you've relocated or, or whatever it may be. We've, we've asked that question. It's, it's kind of been a societal question of why am I doing what I'm doing? And, and it's such a powerful question to ask in your own life or if you own your own business or you're a supervisor or, or a boss. That it's an important question to ask. Like, why am I doing what I'm doing? And answering the why question can bring such clarity to so much that you do, so much that you lead. In this past August, um, I took a couple days to kind of get away and ask that question of God. God, why am I doing what I'm doing? And, and sitting in the mountains, talking to God, I felt such a, a sense of, of clarity. And, and it wasn't a, a revelation that was vastly you know, divergent from what I've been doing as a pastor or what we as a church have been doing, but it was really a reminder from God of why you're here, why I'm here, why our church is here, why Calvary is where it is, position to do what it does. And, and that why is to be a church so committed to transforming the community that it is noticeably better and different because God's people are here. See, we aren't called to be a church that simply gathers. We're called to be a church that goes, that, that we wanna be a church without walls. We wanna be a church that, that sends out. And throughout this month, we're, we're talking about this kind of manifesto of sorts of what it means to be a church without walls. Today, we're gonna to talk about being clear on scripture. Next week, we're gonna talk about being curious on needs. And the week after that, we're gonna talk about being compelled with action. And, and then we'll talk about being comfortable with the uncomfortable. And the last Sunday of this month is our Vision Sunday. And uh, that week, we're gonna talk about being clear on our mission. And, and, and I know maybe if you're thinking about this, it would make logical sense. Uh, if you're gonna transform a community, like let's start with the current state of things. Like let's figure out what are the needs and how can we meet them? How, how can we meet those needs? In other words, doing a needs assessment would allow us to evaluate like what needs are around us and how could we best organize to meet them? That would make sense. However, we're a church. We're not just a nonprofit. We're not just a service-oriented nonprofit. We believe before we meet physical, emotional, or relational needs, we believe that every human being, first and foremost, has a spiritual need. Next week, we're going to talk more about being curious about needs, but today, 
I think it's important for us to start with the premise, the launching pad, the thesis of our entire calling and existence as a church and as followers of Jesus. If we don't start there, we could miss the whole point. If we don't start with what is our mission or what, what is the thing that ultimately uh, leads us, we'll never be able to hit our goal. If we don't start with the premise, the, the, the filter the, the, that guides us and leads us, it's important to start there. You see, uh, where we start, our premise isn't just about a feeling. It's not like a feeling I have, like, hey, Pastor Nick's excited about something, and let's do that. It's not, it's not about that. It's, it's not even a passion. It's a mandate, it's a commission, it's our calling. And that calling didn't come from a good friend or family member, a mentor or an advisor or some consultant. You know, those are all really good, valuable people. Um, but, but this calling has come from God and because of that, we filter our calling through scripture, through, through God's word. And, and, and it's the foundation for all that we do as a church. In fact, our first value as a church is that we start by seeking God through his word and his spirit. This is one of the values, the first value of our church. We start by seeking God through his word and his spirit. Like everything we do, we want to start there. That should be our starting point. Why, you might ask, why would we use some ancient text from a different era to interpret a modern complex environment and circumstances like we found ourselves in? Like it doesn't make sense. Maybe you've asked that of your own life. Maybe you've thought, you know, why use some outdated document to process a rapidly, very rapidly changing world? And that might seem kind of odd to you. It would be understandable. But if you go back 2,000 years, uh, a lot of people had the exact same thought. They, they were asking the same question when the New Testament, which is the second part of the Bible, when the New Testament was being written uh, in the first century. And in fact, one of the early church leaders, a, a guy by the name of Paul, who wrote a number of letters that would later become New Testament scripture, uh, he actually responded to that very idea in a letter that he wrote to one of his young protégés, a guy by the name of Timothy. <clears throat> now, Timothy... Timothy was pastoring a church uh, that Paul had started. It was in this Roman city of Ephesus. And uh, Ephesus in the first century had really flourished under the reign of Caesar Augustus. It became increasingly uh, cosmopolitan. It was an international trade center, really because of its location right on the Aegean Sea. It was the perfect location for this. And so people from all over the Roman Empire would come through, pass through Ephesus. And it was also considered one of the most sacred cities of antiquity because, uh, because the temple of, of Artemis, which uh, the, the temple of Artemis was one of the seven wonders of the world. It featured this statue that was made from meteorite. That's kind of cool. Uh, this incredibly diverse city had people from all walks of life and corners of the known world at that time. The gods worshipped there, the sacred scriptures read in this city were nearly as numerous as the number of people. It was a very spiritually diverse place. And the question could be asked, what difference does Jesus in this sacred scripture we now call the Bible, what difference does it make in that kind of a world? Like it seems like that would just be a, one of many. And it's the same question we could ask ask in a very similar modern world. The most common premise of belief in today's world regarding faith or religion or spirituality or a higher power is, is hey, whatever works for you is good. Like, if it works for you, then that's good. I'll do what I, I, works for me and, and we'll be okay. And, and that's a pretty similar belief that was widely represented in the city of Ephesus where Timothy was pastoring in. in. In fact, Paul wrote this in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. He said this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power. Man, if I could sum up our current state of things in society in a paragraph, man, that would be a pretty, pretty good, clear paragraph to do it. This is what Paul was writing. In other words, when everyone's standard and guide is subjective, there's moral anarchy where evil can prevail because everyone's good and everyone's right path is subjective to their perspective 
to their feelings, which I don't know about you, but our perspective and feelings are always changing. And, and today, we're not gonna go too far down that path specifically, but I wanna simply say this. We believe God's word is more than just a crutch. It is a guide. It is a guide. And I, and I don't say that simply because of a feeling that I have in my guts or something. It's because of something that I know, that I know, that I know to be true. And I've watched it prove itself in my life and throughout human history thousands of times over. And, and, and into the morally abstract world that Timothy was pastoring in, into the complex world that we find ourselves living in, Paul writes these powerful piercing words about the importance of using scripture as our guide and filter, not just some religious document that we lean on in difficult times. Here's what Paul writes in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. He says this, all scripture is God-breathed and is useful. Can you say useful? All scripture is God-breathed and is useful. Isn't that an amazing statement right there? You could stop right there, and wow, that is a powerful, deep, deep statement. All scripture is God-breathed, and it's useful. It's useful to you. It's useful to me. It's useful to our world. It's not just a religious document we set on the shelf. It's useful. What's it useful for? Here's what he goes on. He says it's useful for teaching, for rebuking, for correcting, and for training in righteousness. Why does any of that matter? And he explains that. So that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped. Can you say equipped? So God's word, this guide, isn't just so that we could have, you know, a religious document and, and carry around and, you know, just be like every other world religion and, and have our thing. This guide, ultimately, is so that we can be thoroughly equipped for what? For every good work. God wants us to be thoroughly equipped for every good work. You see, our calling as a church, I talked about this, our mission, our mission, the soccer ball, is to lead people into an overflowing life with Jesus. That is our mission. That's why we're here. And, and, and our guide, in, in other words, what that means is that everyone that's part of Calvary family, that's part of this church, we want to make sure that they have an opportunity to be thoroughly equipped for every good work. That you can be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Now, not just like good works that happen in church. And, and that's important. Like so many are serving today in our kids' ministry, our, uh, on our greet team, and, and the Connection Center, and the cafe. Like that, that's really important. But so you can be thoroughly equipped for every good work. The ones that are here and the ones that are out there. All of it. That's, that's what we want to be as a church. And our guide to do that isn't simply the latest trends. It's not the coolest approach or the most popular teaching on church ministry, although all of those can be really valuable and beneficial and we learn from those and we glean from those. The most beneficial, though, in the place that we start, the filter we apply, uh, that all that we do, all that we try, strive to do, it isn't how will this land, but rather how, will, how did God intend it to be? Well, what did God's word say about this? Uh, now, if you read the New Testament, one of the things you'll notice and see a lot of things written about uh, is how we follow Jesus, how we interact with each other, why we should do all of that. But very little, very little, if anything, is recorded about what early church gatherings look like and, and specifics of how early church, church Christians uh, worshiped and, and how they did ministry in the world. Like, I wish... Like you could open the book of Acts or, or 1 Corinthians or, or Ephesians or, or Galatians. I wish you could like open up to one of the chapters and it had like a, a service order. It said like, hey, look, you know, they opened uh, their worship song with Raise a Hallelujah too, so we should do that. Or, or you know what, they, 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 they received communion right here after this song, so that's what we should do. Or, or hey, if they received an offering and they preached, Paul would preach for like three hours. I guess we should preach for three hours. Like, well, we're not gonna do that, don't worry. Um, Steelers don't play till 820 tonight though, so we do have a little time. <laughs> but, um, like, wouldn't it be nice if, if we could open up the Bible, open up scripture, and have like an outline of exactly what we're supposed to do? But that's not there. It's not there. Or, or, or if the Bible gave us our missions approach or, or what our missions approach should look like as a church, uh, that, that what liturgy we should use or, or, or what our structure of our organization should look like. Like, wouldn't it be great if we had those things? But the reality is scripture is noticeably silent about all of that. 
Like, none of that is there. And, and, and just as uh, all that is contained within Scripture, I believe so strongly, and I've watched take place, just, be, just like we believe that everything that's contained in Scripture is God-inspired and directed, I believe everything that is not in the Bible is equally God-inspired and directed. There, there's a reason we aren't given details on how we should function speci- specifically as a church, the ministries we should or should not do, and the structure we take. It's not because those things aren't important, but because, the, because of this idea that's at the core of being a church without walls, that scripture, scripture's our guide, but our community is our goal. See, see, this is the core of what it means. What it means is scripture's our guide, but, but our community is ultimately our goal. We filter what we do through the principles and guide rails of scripture, but then we tailor or adapt those principles to the specific context or specific place where God has positioned us. So what church looks like here might look like differently. That's not right or wrong. That's just the way it is. You know, we, if you haven't figured this out, if you have, haven't, uh, maybe this will be a, 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 you know, a wake-up call or your eyes will be open. We aren't located in the inner city of Pittsburgh. Um, we aren't located in the rural mountains of Lower Highlands. We are in suburbia. We are located in Norwin. If you didn't know that, like you just woke up, you're in Irwin, Pennsylvania. That's where you're located, okay? We're in Norwin. This is a suburban community of 45,000 people, a a community where our median household income is just over $74,000, where over half of our population has a bachelor's or master's degree. That is Norwin. I didn't make that up. I didn't force that. I didn't, like, dream that up. That's just the way it is. That's our community. Our church will look very different than churches located in the inner city, or in rural mountains. Because that's not our context. It's not, not, not that we're better or they're better or we're worse or they're worse. It's, it's our context. Because scripture is our guide, but our community is our goal. For, for young Timothy, in, in what most believe was Paul's final letter before he'd be martyred, Paul is encouraging Timothy. He's challenging Timothy to take all that, Tim, that Paul had poured into him and taught him, all that he had, had, had read in Scripture and apply it to the unique context, not change it, not morph it, or, or in any way alter it, but apply it in a relevant way. Like, this is what Paul is trying to encourage Timothy with. Like, hey, Timothy, take what I've taught you. Take what you know to be Scripture. Take the guide that you have, but don't just hold on to it. Launch it, kick it toward the goal. Like, that's the goal. Man, that was a really good one. <laughs> that, that's, that's what we're here to do. Like, we're not just here to, to, to hold on to Scripture and say, man, this is so good. I want to soak this up. I need more of Scripture in my life. We do. But if we don't apply it to our context, we've missed the point. If Scripture is our guide, but we don't have a goal, then, then we're just a, a, a cesspool of good stuff but it's not pouring out. God wants us to pour out. Scripture is our guide, but our community is our goal. Why? Because because our goal, the goal of our community, our goal isn't simply to gather. It's to go, to go out, to affect the world around us. And and we're gonna talk more about that uh, in in the coming weeks. But, But the first calling is to start with Scripture. That's our guide. That's what we're here for. We're, we're, we're here to start with Scripture as our, as our guide. So what does that mean? What does that mean for us? What does that mean for you and for me? That means that just as Scripture is our guide collectively as a church, that Scripture is your guide individually as well in your life. And I, I know I get asked questions all the time. People are trying to figure out, like, God, God what do you have for my life? What, what am I supposed to do in this next season God, how can I be the best parent or, or spouse? How can I find that right person that I can spend the rest of my life with? How, how can I be the best employee or the best boss? Or how, how can I make the most of my life? And how can I discover my purpose? And these are really incredible, awesome questions. Can I tell you, the starting point to discover all of that is right here. It's in God's word. You might be like, well, that's just an ancient scripture. Like, it doesn't have anything. It does. It's all God breathed, and it's useful. Not just for us as a church, like how we function as a church. It's not just an organizational document. It's a personal document. It's a, it's a letter that God has written to you to help you lead, be, lead your life and, and, and guide your life. 
See, you can't follow what you don't know or what you're not familiar with, though. Like, if, if you're like, man, okay, Scripture's my guide, that's great, but if you're not familiar with it, like, how are you going to follow it? How is it going to guide you if you don't know how to follow it? Uh, let me give you an example. I don't know if you've ever received directions from someone who's like a long-time Pittsburgh resident, like has lived in Pittsburgh for a long time. We might call them a yinzer. That's not an offensive word. It's true. It's a yinzer. Their directions are usually completely different than what you'd get in Google Maps or Apple Maps or anything like that. Why? Because in Google Maps and Apple Maps, like the directions that they provide are giving us directions based on what currently is there. Right? Like, hey, um, you're going to go uh, down Pennsylvania Avenue and you're going to turn left on Ash Street and you're going to go down the hill and there's a pizza hut and you'll turn right onto Route 30. Okay? Like that's Google Maps or Apple Maps. A Yinzer's directions, totally different. Completely different. Like they don't tell you how to navigate what's currently there, but to understand a, a good Yinzer directions, uh, uh, you have to have a pretty good idea of what used to be there. Right? Like, like uh, it might go something like this. Like, turn on PA Avenue, go past where Murphy's used to be, keep going, you'll pass the old Pennsylvania Avenue school, and just keep driving, and then you're going to turn left where Norwin High School used to be, like you're going towards Kerber's. That, that's like the directions you get, right? If you're not familiar with the area, you'd be totally lost. You're like, I have no idea what Murphy's even is. I don't know where PA Avenue School used to be, even if I'm passing it, and I definitely don't know where Norwin High School used to be. I'm not even sure what Kerber's is, so I'm at a loss. You would be totally lost. If you're not familiar, like, you can't follow the instructions, right? If we're not familiar with Scripture, it can't be our guide. If we just expect, like, through osmosis, God's Word to just give us point-by-point -point directions, and, and, and we just going to do whatever it says, like we're robots or something, it's not going to work. We have to be familiar with Scripture. If Scripture is our guide, if is our goal, we have to be familiar with Scripture. To understand the directions uh, from someone who lives in this area, you have to be familiar with the area, right? That's, that's what, what we're here to do. And, and for you to follow the guide of Scripture, you have to be familiar with it. That means more than just watching a few good movies that are adapted from Scripture or base your knowledge of, of the Bible on what you read on people's social media posts. Like, it has to be more than that. Uh, here's the one revelation that maybe this would be an aha for you. Most of the movies writ that are written and produced about Scripture are so off. <laughs> They're not even accurate. They are uh, not even close, most of them. So if you base your idea of Scripture on that, you're already, already lost on that one. You will find yourself fulfilling your God-given pr purpose more effectively, and we will find ourselves as a church fulfilling our God-given purpose more effectively when we recognize that Scripture, Scripture is our guide, but our community is our goal. That's what we're here for. And as we start off this year, my hope, my prayer, my, my, my passion is, is that we could become more familiar with scripture as our guide. Not simply our glue that holds everything together. Uh, I know for some, you know, this last year was difficult. And, and for some of us, this next year in 2023 is gonna be difficult. You may face some of the most difficult, painful, uncertain moments of your life. And I pray that you can turn to scripture and it will guide you and lead you, that you can lean on your community of faith here, that we can support you and pray for you and encourage you and lift you up and, and, and bring meals by when you need it and, 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 and be there to listen when you're going through something difficult. I pray that we can do that for you. But scripture is more than just the glue that keeps you together. It needs to be the guide that leads you, even in good times. It, it, it's what God has given to us as a gift. And, and here's what I want to encourage you to do as the a, as a worship team comes this morning. Here's what I want to encourage you to do. Over this next month, we, we are kicking off this year walking through a Bible reading plan together. It's a 28-day Bible reading plan. Uh, this is an opportunity for us as a church to read Scripture, to interact with Scripture, and ultimately to apply it to our lives. 
Maybe, maybe, maybe for you, you've gotten out of the habit of reading the Bible every day, or, or maybe that's not even something you do. Like, it's completely foreign to you. You've never, never done that. Uh, either way, my hope is this is an easy, achievable way to become familiar with the guide of Scripture so you can become who God created you to be. This is what, what I want to encourage you to do. If you have your phone or if you're watching online, you're on a computer, whatever it might be, if you just go to bible.calvaryirwin.com, bible.calvaryirwin.com, you can access this 28-day Bible reading plan on the YouVersion Bible app or on your internet browser, and we can do this together. And if you're like, man, I'm not good at keeping up with that, that's okay. If you miss a day, that's all right. Pick back up the next day. It's not the end of the world. We're not going to come, you know, pound on your door and say, you know, you're going to hell because you missed a day of your Bible reading plan, okay? So be at ease on that. Um, what we're here to do is to walk through Scripture together. On the, on the app, it's really cool. You can interact. You can post comments or questions, and we can interact with it, and you can read the, the, the reading plan for that day and, and process, God, what are you speaking to me, and how can I apply this to my life? Like, this is an opportunity for us to allow scripture to be our guide as we step into a new year. Now, can you imagine, can you imagine how transformational, trans, transformational our church could be in this community? Like the movement for good, the movement of hope that could be unleashed in our world if we started to allow scripture to be our guide. Now, not sharing, you know, not starting with how you feel or, or, or what we believe politically or socially, but, but what God says is true, what God wants us ultimately to become. Like, could you imagine the difference we could make if this became our guide? Not, not just what the, the, the news are telling us we should say or believe, not just what our friends are telling us what we should say or believe, not just what I, my feelings or my emotions are telling me what I should say or believe. No, if we allow God's word to be ultimately our guide. And if you wanna see a case study of what that kind of an approach can, can create and unleash, just read the book of Acts. It's the fifth book in the New Testament. Read the book of Acts. It was disruptive, transformative, and nothing short of revolutionary what took place. Think about 12 men, uneducated men, grew to 120 believers in an upper room in downtown Jerusalem. In one day, grew to 3,000, and it just took off from there. And we sit here, stand here, 2,000 years later, still part of the revolution that was started when a group of people were willing to allow God's word to be their God. It flipped the world upside down. Think about what could happen in our world. This is the revolution we are called to unleash as a community of followers of Jesus, not simply a religious organization, not even simply a church. We are called to be a church without walls, a church who has the Bible in one hand and a servant's towel in the other. And as we close today, as we close today, I want to go through a practice together as a church, even if you're watching on, online, a practice that churches have been doing for 2,000 years. I'd like to recite a passage of scripture together in closing, and then we're going to close singing a song together. This passage has often been referred to as the Lord's Prayer. Maybe, maybe it's common to you, but whether it is or, or not, my hope is that scripture can get into your head, into your heart, and become your guide as you look toward our goal to transform the world around us. And, and my hope as we pray this prayer together, as this could be a declaration, God, let heaven come to earth. God, let it be in, on earth just as it is in heaven. You can become the connecting point of that. Would you stand with me this morning? We're gonna pray, declare this verse found in Matthew's gospel, chapter six, the Lord's prayer. We'll have it on the screen if you don't know it off the top of your head. But here's my hope for you. This isn't a religious uh, declaration. This is a personal declaration. God, this is what I want from my life in 2023. I want scripture to be my starting point, my guide. I, I don't wanna just go through the motions. I, I don't wanna just, you know, make it through another year and, 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 and just survive. No, God has so much more in store for you. He doesn't just want you to survive. Here's what he wants you to do. He wants you to transform, not just yourself, but everything around you. So as we close this morning, we're gonna pray the Lord's Prayer together, and then we're gonna sing the song together, and then, then we'll dismiss. So let's pray this prayer, this declaration, the Lord's Prayer together. Here we go. Our Father, which art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trust us against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This is Pastor Nick Pohl, the lead pastor at Calvary. We're so glad you joined us for today's podcast. I hope you enjoyed the message. At Calvary Church, we're passionate about leading people into an overflowing life with Jesus. We would love the opportunity to connect with you on your faith journey and hear what God is doing in your life or join you in prayer for any needs you might have. You can visit us online at calvaryirwin.com or send us an email at info at calvaryirwin.com. On our website, you'll find previous week's messages, a list of upcoming events, as well as resources designed to help you take those next steps on your journey of faith. See you next week, and may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace.